based communication between JavaScript on the client side and the ASP.NET Core server application on the server side. We have covered these two chapter, uh, these two lectures. One is on the AJAX minimal reserve form. Then we have talked about AJAX get request also. And today we shall be learning how to write cascading dropdowns with a master and a slave. So let us get started. Our project will consist of a pair of dropdowns as you can see here. The master dropdown, this is the master dropdown, it consists of some items. When the selection changes on the master dropdown, an AJAX GET request will be sent to the server. The request will be a GET request. We have covered it in the previous lecture also. The, a GET request will be sent to the server to fetch items for the slave dropdown. So this is what we are going to do and in the meantime a please wait ticker will be shown. And once the, once the request returns, the slave will be populated according to the data that is received from the server side. Start by creating a new ASP.NET Core project by using an empty template and add a folder called pages. The pages folder will, will hold our razor pages. So right click the pages folder to add a razor page called index. You will get two files, the CSHTML and the CS file. These are the two files that you will get. This will contain the backing class and this will contain the markup. Open the razor file, that is you open the index.cshtml file so that we can write the markup for the two drop downs into this file. This is the file that will open. I have already completed it. So I will explain the main parts of this file. This is the basic plumbing. There are the three directives that you must already be familiar. The add page directive, the add tag helper directive and the namespace directives. These you should already be familiar by now. And here we have added a code block. This block will contain the items of the dropdown. The items of the dropdown they have to come from a collection of select list items. So this is the collection that will feed our dropdown, the master dropdown. Usually you can obtain this collection by querying some database, but we have hard coded them only for the sake of simplicity. Each select item has a display value, uh, has a display value for the text. The text is the display and value is the backend value. And for the empty one we have wrote, written as select, then one item, the second item with its backend value, with its backend value. So this is a simulation that we have done. You can make some query on the database. The basic point is that you have a collection of select list items that will act as the feed for this dropdown. And as you can see, uh, this is the table and this is the label for the master dropdown. The select tag helper, this is the select tag helper with an ID master that we will use it to uh, to handle it through JavaScript. And in this we use this ASP hyphen items. This is used to specify the select list source. This source we have created here. So that source is acting as the source of items for this selected dropdown. This is the tag helper that we have used. And here, this is the slave dropdown that will get its items after an AJAX call. When the item of the master changes, it will place a AJAX request and that request will bring the items for the slave one. So this ID will help us manipulate the slave from the JavaScript. We will fill it after an AJAX query returns from the server. This is the please wait that will show the please wait ticker. And this is the JavaScript that we have written, which is the main part. And here you can see that this is the main dropdown, the master dropdown. To that we have add a, added a change event when the selection changes, this function will be called. When this function is called, inner HTML please wait will become active and inner HTML of the slave dropdown, it will contain its first option as select. And here we are using the fetch asynchronous method to call a slave data function on the server side. To that we are going to send the selected value of the master dropdown as an ID parameter. We are sending it as a get request 
For this, you can see the previous tutorial where I have explained how it all works. So this ID will basically re reach the server and from there the AJAX request will be, uh, the AJAX response will be sent by the server. In case some errors occur, this catch will help us log the network errors and then uh, when the response is received, this response will be this response will be read asynchronously and the JSON contained in the response will be again parsed asynchronously and the result of the JSON will be available in data and and this data will actually contain collection of some objects and this for each will be used to parse that collection that is coming from the server side this is JSON dot parse data so this data is a collection we are parsing the collection that is coming from the server side and running a for each loop. In the for each, we are creating an option element and setting its attribute value. Uh, you can see, I'll explain it here like that. You can see that this is the option uh, that I'll be creating and I'll be setting its value. I'll write it better. Option value is equal to whatever ID is received from the server side that ID will form its value and then inner HTML will be set as name. So you will get something like this option value is equal to let us say 5 or 6 whatever comes and here the name of the item and the option tag will close. So it is this sort of a story that will be built by this JavaScript story. And uh, slave dot append opt so this option will be appended to the slave so that the slave will start getting its items according to whatever data is received from the server side and this is a slave item that will be sent by the server i have uh, i put a uh, space here this we will see when we go to the server side story this is a slave item with an it id and a name this id forms the value and name forms the inner html of the slave drop down so this append and this story is the whole crux of the whole thing. So you can review this code at your own level also. Okay. Next come to the solution explorer and open the backing class so that we will write the server side story. This is the file that will open. These are the using directives that you can use to see if any errors come while you compile. And after that, after that, uh, this is, I'll show you, this is the option value ID, this, uh, as I was showing you, set attribute value item dot ID. This is the slave item class. This ID we used and this name we used for the inner HTML. So this class slave item, it represents an item of the slave dropdown. It will be used to fill the slave dropdown. And then uh, this is the backing class and on this we have the method on get slave data. We have prepended on get to the slave data method that we specified in the JavaScript. This we have discussed in the last tutorial also that this should be prefixed with on get. If you do not prefix it, then this will not receive the call. So it will receive the ID of the master dropdown and an artificial delay. And then this is the slave item collection that will be sent and I have used a switch statement. Uh, obviously, you will not be using a switch. You will be using some database query. So I've used a switch statement. If one is the ID of the master dropdown, then these items will be sent. If two, then these items will be sent. And finally, this will serialize the collection and it will send it as a JSON to the uh, client side. So this is how it actually works. You can run the project to see that it works as expected. Thank you.